You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, get the point. Good. And now... Fendum. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. I can read your mind, but I don't want to because, oh my God, I can read my own and that's pretty freaking scary. So, yeah. (laughs) Hey there, hi there, ho there, y'all. This is Grammy Mary and I'm sitting here in my rocket chair here on this freaker Friday evening. And looky there, there's a duck and Grammy got, oh wow. Okay, Cowboy Tech got him. Cool cool yeah had to do a little bit of alan parsons to get because yeah i've been i've been kind of sort of checking out some weird videos again basically what i'm doing is is i you know i turned on youtube and um i watched one video that i wanted to watch and then i started scrolling you know and checking out what the things were on the side and you know is like taking the the scenic route when you're going on a drive, yeah, I wanna. I went on a, uh, a cybernetic scenic route today, and did a lot of listening to some weird stuff. And man, oh man, yeah, they can read your mind. They can keep an eye on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, R- Rob, well, I did have chili the other day. <laughs> So, you know, you just figure out what the heck. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. I love these people in the chats. They're just so fun. Okay, let me get let me say hey to everybody. Kill the ducks. Vinny, see how you are. You're killing ducks, you big bully. Quack quack waddle waddle quack quack waddle. But ducks are so cute. Okay, over here on Twitter. Thank you, Vinny for uh, retweeting that and thank you barman for letting everybody know that i am on hey veruca kosher salt just followed me how fun is that veruca kosher salt i like that (laughs) and uh chuck calesto and who's this other one Gigi, how fun cool i got some new followers or stalkers or whatever but yeah hey there everybody over here on twitterville and if you are listening in on spreaker by the way come on over to reallibertymedia.com think of a nickname join the chat give me some static i'll give it back but i gotta tell you my internet is so yucky that i can i can barely do this okay i could barely do this before (laughs) but (laughs) We aren't talking about my abilities. We're talking about the internet and how wonky it is. And yeah, I I can't keep that many chats open and still broadcast broadcast. Blah 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 blah. Why you should change the direction of your ceiling fan. Why thank you, CNET. I think I'll click on that because hey, you know, I always wondered that. <laughs> Actually, I've had people tell me two different reasons, and it's like, wait a minute here. Hey, oh, this is from July. What the hell? That's getting me ready for summer. It ain't summer here. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, well. In any case, <gasps> Calvin and Hobbes. I love Calvin and Hobbes. You do know Hobbes is real. Hobbes is alive. It's the rest of the world that's not real. At least according to some of the videos I listened to earlier today. <gasps> Okay, let me say hey to everybody before I go off on a tangent, because I really did. I have I have had Acme light bulb moments to who laid a chunk the last few days, and I've been, of course, they've been busy days, and so you know they're busy doing menial tasks or you know strong back, weak mind kind of stuff, like helping my mom clean her garage. <laughs> Yay! And, uh, yeah, so all kinds of stuff runs through my mind while I'm doing these little things that really don't require me to put a lot of brain power into them. (laughs) And, yeah, I have had some epiphanies from hell and then some. 
Oh, God. More commercials. Yeah, I don't want to see no commercials because I'm afraid them com commercials are more than likely. Yeah, I started watching one about Planned Parenthood. And it's like, you guys are just sick. You guys are just sick. In any case, let me say, hey, um, I'm still having trouble. And I even updated my Vivaldi. And I'm still having trouble getting onto freedomsnetwork.org. Dot com dot I'm I'm having trouble getting into Freedoms Network. So let me see if maybe opening Waterfox if I can get into it there. Because if I do, then that's going to be fun. But in any case, uh, over here on Fakey Book. Hey, Catherine, how are you doing, sweetheart? Hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous late, late evening for you, my dear. Um, yes. What? Fluke needs that. Oh. Okay. Fluke is spiky. Wow. The, oh, nachos. It's nacho cheese, dude. Um, let me see here. Wait a minute. Let me close it. Oh. Nope. I want that one. I want that one. I don't think I want that one. I'll close that one. Let me. Water Fox is loading. And it's loading really slow. <laughs> Because my co poor computer, bless its heart. Okay, let me see. Where, where, where are you tonight? Anybody know that song? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over. And <laughs> yeah, uh, Ray, Roy Clark passed away the other day. So, you know, I've had hee-haw stuff going in my mind today, too. And, um, what's his face? Uh, St Stan Lee, yeah, from Marvel Comic Books, he passed away as well. Yeah, you know, it's what happens. Happens to us all. There we go. Freedomsnetwork.com. Let's see if I can get that to come up on Waterfox. If I can, that would be awesome sauce. Let me see here. Yes, it's taking forever. Okay, I don't want that one. I know, don't you guys like the Howard Cosell play-by-play? -play? Um, um, I have Adblock, honey. It's just trying to close a link, and I don't want to open them. I've got 99 problems, so I'm just going to get my hair done. My stylist can help me with the other 92. Okay. That works. Come on. Darn. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I'm having so much here. Aren't you? Okay. Well, seeing it's taken its own sweet. I've done Twitter. Hi, Twitter. Um, over here on reallit.org. Done. Shit. Well, I'm still broadcasting at least, so that's a good thing. Um, in any case, I will not be around next week, Friday. That is the Friday after Thanksgiving because I have got family things to do. And so, yeah, I can at least see that I'm still broadcasting. Other than that, my computer is just pretty much telling me to take a fly and you know what on a rolling donut. And now even that's not even showing. <laughs> it's been my week for this. It really has. I have had a week of Mondays. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, and this last Wednesday, the reason why I wasn't on was because I was down at my mother's. I was helping her clean her garage. So... Come on. Act like you're going to actually do something. Let's wake up and fly right. Let's do something here. Come on, computer. Be nice. It's okay. It's all good. Life is good. Life is wonderful. You're a nice computer. I've had you for years. Please don't try and crap out on me now. I really, really like you. I don't want to have to switch to the other computer. I really don't. Hmm, okay, that's flashing. Let me see if that'll come up. That does. Hey, did I fall away? <laughs> okay, I can see everybody over here on, um, 
yeah, in the chit chat. But other than that, my computer's still kind of giving me the wonkies. So I'm going to kind of tell you what all. Can you hear me okay? There we go. Now it's moving. Ah, Water Fox was just too much. Water Fox was too much. So apparently I'm just not going to be able to do Freedom's Network. Because Vivaldi does not like it. And so therefore, I'm just going to have to deal with not doing the effing site. So, um... Okay. So am I back, guys? I hope I'm back. Open Vivaldi is just a blank screen, so... Huh. I'm going to have to tell you a story. Come listen to a story about a man named Jed. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, freaking Freaker Friday. Freaky shit happens to me, I tell you what. Especially when I get to have a Monday every day of the week. It's like, holy crap. Okay, so... My Wednesday, uh, Farmer and I decided to go down and see my mom, and we was going to MF and FM and MF and FM. Can you hear me? Just somebody. Yeah, they go. They go. It's it's magic. Fuck you. Yeah, it's early in the show, but it's been one of those days. So, they go. Am I broadcasting? I hope I am. Yeah, it shows, it shows I am. In any case, <laughs> since I can't. My Vivaldi isn't giving me anything. I'm just going to let you know about my wonderful uh, trip to see my mom. Oh, I'm front? Well, thank you, Vinny. That's the wumpy part. Well, actually, the back's wumpy, too, because I got rump. <laughs> frumpy. Hi, frumpy. Um, you know what? I bet you I could say hey to everybody over here in the chat. I bet I could, seeing as how, yeah, I'm waiting on Vivaldi to get its shit together. Yeah, it's not responding. So, uh, dun -dun, over here in the RLM chat, if you're listening in, yeah. <laughs> I know, Rob. That's what I get for reading your mind. I, it, I read it in Braille, too. <laughs> okay, moving along. Hey, over here in the RLM. <laughs> <laughs> I see Barman right up the top. He's the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Barman, I think I need a drink because it's going to be one of them nights. I also see Cowboy Tech. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices, darling. You know, or at least the tone is somewhat pleasant because the message is getting a little bit on the cranky side. Um, <laughs> actually, it's not. Not yet. Um... I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? And he's closely followed by the lovely Moose Girl. They're going to be on later for the Freaker's Ball. So, yeah, y'all need to be checking that out. I'll be going to bed early because i got to go to work early again. But a bing bada boom. It's been busy. You know, hunters and that kind of shit. Um, in any case, I also see the lovely Miss Kate. Kate, your state, Florida, is, got, is heavy emphasis on the duh lately they're just overachieving um oh so i might as well get naked i am naked under my clothes frumpy <laughs> <laughs> how'd you know to say that you try and trick me <laughs> in any case <laughs> hi asmo how are you doing sweetheart um oh Hey, weed. Um, Asmo is here as well as Chalcedoni. Hi, Chalcedoni. I also see the lovely Cycles is here. Hi, Cycles. Um, thank you, Rob. You're so sweet. L looky there, there's also a Chloe going on in the chitty chat as well as a D underscore C. Hi there, Echelon. I think I've seen you chitty chat a couple of times. Oh, there's that bubbler. Booyah. Um, I'm here. Okay, I'm kind of sort of here. I'm having computer issues, but hey, I'm still broadcasting, so I don't know if that's all good or not. Guess we'll find out, won't we? Um, 
In any case, uh, IB Don C is also here, as well as Meister Brower. And looky there, got a double pox going on in the chit chat box again. Poxified and poxophone. Got some pom 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 pom, pom sauce, as well as the lovely rain. Um, okay, your effing did open. I made, but I did. I cleared my cache. My Vivaldi is not responding. So I'm going to go ahead and close it just because it's freaking pissing me off. And I hope that doesn't douche anything else. Um, yeah, Grimmy, I think my computer needs some help. I really do. And I'm thinking after the Thanksgiving holiday, I will take it in and get it, get it worked over. So, <clears throat> but until then, I'm going to muddle along. So there you go. In any case, where was I at? Ah, the lovely rain. I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Rob Works, who I read his mind in Braille. And oh my God, my fingers will never be the same. I <laughs> Thank you for firing up the bubbler, though, hon. I really do appreciate that. Um, I also see Vinny is here, but Vinny said that he's got to bounce. Be back in a bit. Got to bounce. Uh, Vinny, honey, are you like uh, T.I. Double G er? Tigger's bounce, don't you know? Okay, I needed a sip of coffee. Because, yeah, I need something. I need help. I also see Phantom is here. Hey, Phantom. How you doing, sweetheart? Phantom's the one that did my awesome intro for me. Beetle! Hi, Beetle. How are you, hun? I also see Colfax 101 as well as Cyborg Noodle. And looky there, Dakota is here. Hi, Dakota. Um, did I feed the gerbils? Gerbils are scary. <laughs> Take a big old honker eyes. Freak me out. Um... Where am I at? Dakota. Frumpy! Hi, Frumpy. How are you, hon? I also see Gromit is in the chat as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. And looky there, we got some JJs also checked into the chat. As well as Kozu and Skittle, the f -bominator. Although, I think Skittle has gone on hiatus for f Um. Okay, wait for program to respond. I will do that. Did I feed the gerbils? I did not feed the gerbils, but I did feed my bunny. Now, I'm going to get to my little random thought set. Whilst I was, farmer was driving, and I was, I made this um, infinity scarf for my eldest daughter for her birthday. And, you know, school colors of the grandkids, all that fun stuff. And, uh, when you're doing those things on a circular needle, you really can't tell how big they are until you start taking it off of the circular needle. And man, when I took it off the circular needle, it was like, holy crap, this is just, no, this, this is, no, this is not working out for me. This is not. I mean, I tried, I tried, I tried to do the whole, you know, wrap it around the head and then wrap it around the neck and then it still hung down to my knees kind of thing. And although my daughter is taller than me, no. That was not that was not something that I thought she would like. So, while we are on the road to go and see my mom, I start unraveling it. And uh, I had this moment just kind of hit me. And I sat, I was sitting there, you know, unraveling this big old scarf and winding it into a, a yarn ball, which I don't know if any of you have ever done that. We used to do that with my grandma because skeins used to come where you would just stick your hands in there and then you would do, um, you know, you would kind of move your hands back and forth and grandma would wrap it around into a ball so that they would stay in the basket easier and the thread would come off easier. Okay, those of you that haven't done that without visuals, I'm sure it's really hard for you to understand and you ain't getting visuals, sorry, because I've had one of those weeks. But, well, you ain't getting visuals anyway, because obviously my internet sucks. So, <laughs> in any case, I decided to unravel this thing, because it just plain wasn't working for me. And then, you know, I started giggling while I was unraveling, and the farmer goes, spell it, what's so funny? And I said, I just, I just realized that 
I was undoing something that no longer worked for me and I was going to remake it into something that would. And that kind of, he looked at me and he went, wow, you're unraveling a scarf and you're having all of these deep thoughts. And I was like, well, it, it just kind of popped in there and it just happens from time to time. Well, in any case, as I was doing this, um, I got to thinking, you know, it's um, funny how sometimes it takes forever to make something, you know, like where we're at right now in the USA, it took forever for us to get to this point. But when you decide to unravel it, it really does start coming unraveled pretty quickly. Up to a point. Up to a point. Then it starts to slow down considerably. You know, if you wish to uh, keep the materials and make sure that they're usable in your redo, which, you know, materials, when you're looking at, oh, planetary-wise or even just continent-wise, the people, the structures, the, the wildlife, the forests, obviously they don't want to keep the forests and all that fun stuff out in California because they're burning that shit down. And you cannot tell me that that was an accident. I think that was caused by do a direct energy weapon. That's what I think. Pretty freaking wonky. And PG&E, that's the other shit I'm seeing going around. PG&E is apparently a Rothschild or a Rockefeller. I, I don't know. I, I just saw PG&E did this and they're a such and such. And it's like, okay, here we go. I already thought it was wonky and freaky, but yeah. In any case, if you wish to keep your str or if you wish to make the uh, the comeback or the redo a little bit easier, you want to try and, and undo in a manner that, you know, maintains as much as possible of uh, your existing materials, if you know what I mean. So I'm having all of these thoughts while I'm un unraveling this big old honker infinity scarf and winding it up into a ball so that I can start over again. And then I realized that, uh, well, I'll just read it to you. You know, you're getting close to finished when you start hitting more snags. And those snags are a combination of friction from the unraveling and the base or beginning row not wanting to come undone easily because it's been woven together for so long and everything else was built upon it and that's kind of like you know everybody keeps saying well Trumple should be doing this faster if he's going to be doing this crap and people are going well Q isn't you know coming through with this which you know I'm still not real sure about this whole Q thing but I do find it extremely fascinating and I have listened to an awful lot of um, PG&E got legislation passed to bill customers for all. Oh, well, isn't that just special, Frumpy? Thanks. Yeah, they're, those big corporations, they like screwing over the little corporations, a.k.a. you and me. Yeah, that's, that's the way that shit works. So, you know, and... And right, you know, as I was getting down to that last couple of rows with my scarf... It was really, really, I mean, taking forever. Number one, the yarn ball was huge. <laughs> and so I was having difficulty holding on to it. But then pulling things and getting things. To, I know I did, Grimmy. Um, getting things to come undone was really not, you know, things kept getting knotted up, kept having setbacks, kept having to stop and unkink things and I think that's probably what's going on I really do think that there is some kind something's going on something's going on because th the leeches that be are nervous and I think California is case in point the leeches that be are nervous and um, I think they I think um, 
that's why those, you know, to, to get people panicking, to get people fighting, to get all of this fear going, to get that vibration going that direction again, as a, you know, and people going, we need the government to come and help. Well, the only people that I've seen so far that are saying that are just, you know, people that need their heads examined or, well, people that work for the government, however you wish to look at that. So, you know, I was I was thinking of all this stuff as we were going down to Hayes. Well, then we get down to Hayes, and I'm talking with my mom, and um, she's uh, going through closets, and she's finding all these dresses and all these little things that I wore. Um, I did. I had libtards in my scarf. It was a son of a bitch, Rob, but I did get it all completely unwound. Now I need to start all over again which I now I know how to fix the problem. I just have to follow through with it. That's another one of the things that correlation with what's going on right now. We know what we don't want. It's just we need to get together on what we do want and then decide on how we're going to implement it. But that's that's a whole other ball of yarn as well. <laughs> In any case, while I'm talking to my mother and while I'm waiting for Vivaldi to wake the hell up and quit being I'm not responding shit um, <clears throat> she was telling me about um, how she found her wedding dress and I was like wow um, oh well it is agenda 21 stuff frumpy that California stuff those wildfires are, um, they are Agenda 21, but it's its also, you know, doing a little bit of collateral damage kind of stuff to try and get what they want. And it ain't woken. It ain't woken. People are tired of that shit. And, uh, yeah, so, nope, going to have to move along from that one. In any case, my mother was telling me about she'd found her wedding dress, and she said that um, her mom no longer had, my grandma no longer had her wedding dress, because back in the day, like in the late 1930s, they were too poor to go and buy more material to make my mom's com first communion dress. So grandma cut up her wedding dress in order to make my mom's first communion dress. It's called priorities. Something that she no longer needed, no longer required. She repurposed it. Now mom did find what was remaining because she still has that in a lovely little box. Mom's got just about everything stashed away somewhere. Um, but she did find what was remaining of grandma's wedding dress along with her first communion dress. So basically the whole wedding dress was together. But yeah, you know, back in the day, instead of, you know, just toss it away and buy new, back in the day, they used and reused and reused and reused. And also back in the day, my grandpa did shoe repair. And mom told me, and I do remember, you know, when they moved into town, grandma got new dishes. She got new Melmac dishes, you know, those kind of plasticky ones or, yeah, she got Melmac dishes. That was the first set of dishes that she had that was a set. Prior to that, whenever Grandpa repaired somebody's shoes, if they didn't have the cash to pay for the shoe repair, they gave her gave them a dish. And, you know, Mom still has a big platter that Grandpa got that was, you know, like a serving platter. Mom still has that that Grandpa got for repairing somebody's work boots. He needed to have those boots in order to go to work to earn some money to put food on the table. But he didn't have enough spare money to pay Grandpa, so he gave him a great big serving platter. Now see, back in the day, that's how th people did things. And I really don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see that that's a bad way of handling things. You know, if, if you want something done, you know, you guys, you, you agree on... A swap, if you will, a barter 
to get whatever. If you have the skills to tend to something and someone else has a necessity, you can take care of it, but they don't have the finances to pay you, well, then barter it out. Nothing wrong with that. And I think that's what I think that's what we need to go back to. Because in this day and age, you know, and I saw a thing on Twitter, um, Okay, I'm just going to close Vivaldi because it's just not responding. It's it's just being a douche. In any case, um, yeah, back in the day, that's what they did. People just bartered and, uh, you know, swapped out cripes. I can remember Grandma having someone bring over a dozen eggs to pay her for sewing up a dress for them. You know, stuff like that. So, there's nothing wrong with those kind of, those kind of deals. The government says there is, and you know why? It's because the government can't get their cut. But, okay, I shut down Vivaldi. Now, let's see if I can come up with something else. I actually have something to do besides my little random thoughts there. That <laughs> Yay. Other than that, my poor computer, this poor old beast. I think I need to, I think I need to run some, well, no, everything's, looks like it's going Vivaldi douche. Yeah, yeah, I ha I got the Vivaldi douche all right, Grim. Whew, it was not pleasant either. I don't like all those fur and chemicals, don't you know? Um, let me see here. Do I have something else I can peruse while I'm sitting here? <laughs> oh, you just got to love this shit, don't you? Live radio. Ain't it great? Ain't it fun? Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Oh, the too big to fails. Yeah. I always figured... It was the opposite, you know, something was too big to survive, you know, um, if, if something is so big and so cumbersome, kind of like the government, then it has no business surviving because it can't police itself, can't take care of whatever. And so... Yeah, and those lovely little golden parachute clauses that are written into all of these. Well, we got to file bankruptcy, but we still got to pay these people such and such and such. But you little guys, yeah, why don't you just bend over and take it? Which is, yeah, that's just wrong. And the reason they do that crap is because they, um, it, they have a contract. Um... Yeah, that's true, Frumpy. The whole concept is beyond bizarre. Because, yeah, I suck at my job, I get fired. Unfortunately, I don't suck at my job. They ask me to do more. Because, yeah. What is that? I'm afraid to click on anything, I'd be done, see? Because my, my poor widow can put her... I think I'm going to have to put it in rescue. <laughs> oh, I was working on someone else's computer. Maybe mine is jealous. I don't know. Because I, I did get someone else's computer fixed today. But, and now mine is jealous. Damn it. Or maybe I just need to break down and, and fix the other computer and put a new hard drive in it and just, yeah, go that route. I don't know. I don't know. Um, dun dun dun. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rob and Stefan, all the creditors. That is true. Come on, really? Seriously? Okay, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do. I'm pushing buttons, just so you know. <laughs> You should be afraid. Be very afraid. Um, oop. And boss. 
Yes. Um. Okay. Dun dun dun. Let me see. Oh, is Don being an agitator? Like in a washing machine? Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. You do realize that those who st uh, stir the shit pot get to lick the spoon. <laughs> Depends what kind of shit you're stirring, I guess. Okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this one. Just because. Dun, dun, dun. Yay, I am still broadcasting. Isn't this fun? I know, I'm having a blast. <laughs> Thank you, Grim. Yeah, that's what I'm going to put on my other computer. Which, uh, what kind of, what kind of, um. Oh, thank you, Rob. Um, what what kind of radio stuff do they have for Linux? Just curious. Because that other one, once I get the new um, hard drive put in it and get it all as far as I can, I am going to, I do have a, um, a little flip drive that I'm going to, not a flip drive. What in the hell you call those damn things? I do have one of several of those little drives actually and I'm going to download Linux onto that and then I'm going to load it onto the other computer once I put the new hard drive in it. So, but apparently Firefox is not wanting to open either. What the hell? What the hell? <sighs> This is just too much fun. Oh, Mint? Okay, thanks, Rob Works. Let's see, what's going on over here in the red pill? Um, I know, sweetheart. I know you're just teasing him, Q. And that's cool. Give him some static, because I'm just sitting here going... Dun, 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 dun. Um... Oh, and Stanley, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter and it was like, Thank you, Rob Works. It's a thumb drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Grim. Yeah, after, after Thanksgiving, I will most definitely be switching to that route because this is, this is getting redunculous. It's like, okay, baby, I know, I know. You know, unless, unless, you know, unless is a really, really, it's only like, what, uh, six letters? U-N-L-E-S-S, -S -S, yeah. Um, unless you care a whole awful lot, things won't get better. No, they won't. Um, oh, okay. That's interesting. Now I have fun things going on. What's happening now? Hot stuff. <laughs> I just love this shit, don't you? Okay. In any case, let's see. What do I want to talk about? Uh, I could talk about oils. Ooh! Um, we are making, where I work, we are switching to essential oils cleaners and air fresheners for the hotel and that's one of those things that uh, the boss she wants to that sh she wants to use it as an advertising thing as well all natural cleaners um, all natural air freshener all that other fun stuff so that's gonna be really cool and she's gonna order her oils through me so hey I'm gonna be making some money um, some crazy stories about the hotel job. Well, let's see. Other than me having to uh, restore some... Oh, God, what was that the other day? <laughs> Actually, I'm not necessarily a crazy story, but I tell you what. Frickin' those damn hunters. <sighs> they bring their hunting dogs into the room, and then they go out where, the, where we had cleaning stations set up for them to clean up their pheasants on either end of the hotel. And... Uh, 
they're sitting out there having brewskis or whatever the hell else adult beverages that they're drinking and having a damn good time had their dogs in their hotel rooms dog shit on the carpet yeah guess what i got to do yesterday because that's part of my jackie of all trades position i got to shampoo carpets in rooms where far where they freaking freaking holy crap and holy um <laughs> it doesn't take much <laughs> but um those damn hunters let their didn't let their dogs out to go to the bathroom and so they went to the bathroom on the carpet mm-hmm let me tell you, I was already drop kick somebody through the goalpost life. Ain't no two shits about that. Um, let's see. What else? What else has gone on? Uh, we have lovely ladies that are Hispanic, and they're teaching me Spanish. Um, oh, that's just scary, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Hotel Cortez. Mine, mine is Kenda's country, and oh, hey, look, Vivaldi's doing something. Yay! What's it doing? Okay, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. It was thinking about doing something. It's thinking about it. Um, oh, here it comes, and it says it's not responding. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mondays. Yeah, I do. They're just special, don't you know? Um, it doesn't bode. Oh, sure it does, Rob. Sure it does. Because you know what? Ours is not like a regular old hotel kind of thing. This is, we are, um, I'm, I'm cruising and cruising and, and sending her messages and all that other fun stuff. We're, we're refurbishing all of the rooms so that each one will have its own little personality kind of thing. Um, and they'll all have like, um, if not antiques, then older furniture that I get to refer, uh, refurbish, which is kind of fun getting to do that. Um, but, um, and then they all get you swear it moved? Really? You know, things have been shifting, Rob. Things are shifting. I'm hearing weird noises. I don't know about the rest. Of, not tonight, necessarily, but, you know, off and on throughout the day. You know, like weird ass. Um, I don't know, Goober. Because I changed the date on mine. Mine is supposed to be saying, I'm not going to check it now because it'll start over again. <laughs> oh, and my Vivaldi is still not. So, um, okay, back to, let's see, agitator, agitator. Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Q. <laughs> Let's see, what else did I do? <laughs> now, see, I can normally I can just talk like crazy and not have a problem. But now that I'm on the radio and I, I had all of this other stuff all lined up, but my freaking computer is being a douchebag. Um, it's like, what the hell? What the hell? I was so ready. Until I wasn't. <laughs> oh, I know you're not responding, you stupid ass Vivaldi. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Um, oh, is that what it is? Oh, okay. And yes, Rob, I am in a different dimension. Um <laughs> Droid. I just heard droid. Uh, da, da. God dang it. I hate when this happens. Normally I have all kind of, and I don't even have nothing right handy to just kind of peruse through and, you know, read you nonsense. I do have a joke book, but that pretty good joke book is pretty stupid. Pretty lame. Let me see. What do I have here? Oh, Reader's Digest. 
the nicest places in America. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I got something going on. What's this? I got a couple of Vivaldi's now. Let me see here. Oh, that one's not responding. And neither is that one. So. <laughs> um, I don't think my Windows is doing maintenance, hon. And I shut off the updates a couple years ago. So. Um, no, it's just, it's been having, you know, like going to the black screen issue for a while. And I've been, been doing the try to tend to myself kind of thing. YouTube and, and Windows questions and that kind of shit. And yeah, I obviously have not repaired it. So I need to call in the big guns. You know, the people that I have to actually pay money to, to get it fixed so but in the interim um am i on the wire no i am not grim and i don't know that <laughs> i can do anything right now about it um i'm i'm balancing on a high wire okay uh let's see okay these are supposed to be the funniest internet jokes ever 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 yeah, you know I'm desperate when I'm breaking out the Reader's Digest that I got for free because they're trying to get me to subscribe. <laughs> but you also know me that I will be able to figure this shit out. Um, what is that? Mind blown. Biggest Q proofs. Oh, you know, I was listening to all that fun stuff earlier today. That's why it's like, what the hell's going on here? Damn it, this is just not cool. Okay, I had to put my cheaters on. Um, okay. It's been 29 years since computer scientist Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, and we can't imagine life without it. I can't either, but I tell you what, this is really freaking frustrating that my goddamn computer is being the shits. Oh, hey, something's trying to happen. Okay, moving along. I'll just be patient here. So, um, as one humorist noted, I put so much... Um, so much more effort into naming my first Wi-Fi than I did my first child. I didn't. I did not. Um, and for many of us, surfing is now a major form of entertainment, which, yes, it was my entertainment until it decided to go douche on me. So, for um, 9 a.m., very busy day today, I need to focus and stay off the Internet. 1 p.m., did you know that Texas has the largest population of prairie dogs? Really? We got a shitload of them here, too. In any case, <clears throat> it's the primary way that we express ourselves. Like on Facebook, we say, my kids are perfect. And on Instagram, my kids are beautiful. And on Twitter, my kids are why I drink. <laughs> I can relate to all of those. My grandkids are perfect, and my daughters are beautiful, and yet they are the reason I drink. So, <gasps> hey, 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 I'm getting notifications. Something's, something's working. I just got a notification from Bo Diddy. So, hey, Vivaldi's slowly waking up. So, here we go. Um... So the true digest tradition, or in true digest tradition, we've collected the best online gags, giggles, and spoofs. Okay, so here we go. Um, oh, the internet star, Finicky Felines, is Grumpy Cat, and that's her frowning. Yeah, you don't have a picture of her frowning to the left. Don't lie to me. Oh, okay. Never mind. My other left. <laughs> And she made a name for herself in 2012 when her dour puss struck a chord with like-minded humans. And then we have kitties. Kitties! I do like kitties. Um, do what? And the fed rest... Oh... Oh, is that is that how the Federal Reserve um, t 
takes back what it thinks is ours. It just destroys it and then says, you, you don't want it anymore anyway. Is that how they do that shit? Doesn't surprise me one damn bit. It's, to me, it's more like a petulant child kind of thing. Well, if I can't have it, nobody can. That's what I'm thinking is going on out in California. So, okay, what's the other one? Um, let's see. Oh, how about this one? Yelp critics. Hey, a lodging establishment got its five stars the hard way. Really? I wonder how that is. So, as far as jails go, this is the creme de la creme. First off, you don't even need a ride there. They pick you up from anywhere in the county, and sometimes they even get you out of bed and bring you, um, and it's all free of charge. Cool. Oh, that must be going to jail then. Yeah. Cool. No, I don't think so. Um, let's see. Best toy that proves bigger isn't always better. Oh, okay. So we took a ball to the beach, and after close to two hours to pump it up, we pushed it around for about ten fun-filled minutes, and then the wind picked it up and sent it hurtling down the beach at about 40 knots. Yeah, that's those big old hunker beach balls. Um... Okay, I know it's trying to do something. So. And yes, I'd be Doncy. People will believe what they want to believe. They will believe what they are ready to believe. Trying to force your opinion or show them information is not going to do any good if they aren't ready to see it or understand it or even attempt to understand it. Um... Let's see. Looking at... Ooh, a regrettable text. My blind date arrived. She looks like something I'd draw with my left hand. Ooh, that's not a good one. How about, uh, my mouth tastes like poor choices. <laughs> I have had morning afters like that. Um, but, you know, just saying. Um... Dun, dun, dun. This looks like it's more visual stuff. You know, Reader's Digest has gotten a lot cheaper because it used to be all shiny pages, and now it's not. Now it's that really thin newspapery paper. It's just not worth the shit. Okay, so, life in the United States. The other day I got carded at the liquor store, and while I was taking out my ID, the old Blockbuster card fell out, and the clerk shook his head and said, never mind, and rang me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I threw away my Blockbuster card <laughs> a couple weeks ago. I ran across it, and I was like, oh shit. Okay, um... My friend Garrick had the solution to forgetting his wife's birthday and their wedding anniversary. He opened an account at the local florist and provided it with both dates as well as instructions to send flowers and a card signed, Your Loving Husband, Garrick. Well, for a few years it worked, and then one day Garrick came home on their wedding anniversary and he saw flowers on the dining room that said, and, and said, What nice flowers, where did you get them? Oh, ooh, ah, that's not a good thing. Garrick, honey, you need to do St. John's Wort, hon, for the memory. Um, <clears throat> every class is a drama class when you're in high school. That is so true. This is all according to life in these United States, according to Reader's Digest. Now, pretty much most the most frightening part of my day is when I get the notification that my mother has tagged me in a post on Facebook. I never have to worry about that because my mother is not on Facebook. So there you go. Um, ooh, your keyboard crapped out. Well, <gasps> guess what? Vivaldi just opened. How sweet! Okay, so let me see. If I can get Freedom's Network to open up. It's thinking. It's thinking. Okay, now while it's thinking. Come on. Do your thing. You know you want to. Ouch. Hello, rascal. I know you're helping mommy. 
You're not much help, though, sweetheart. Sorry. So. <laughs> you really liked that video, didn't you, Rob? <laughs> I did, too. He's quite funny. Okay. Come on. Well, let's see if Twitter will open. Okay. Well, I've got start pages, but that's as far as it gets. I don't know why it's not... Come on. Bunch of pampered... Okay. I know, rascal. Okay, spot, spotted at a laundromat cork board. Please keep clothes on while doing laundry. Oh, oh, that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Just saying. So, okay, Vivaldi, I'm closing you because you're pissing me off. And I'm going to open up Water Fox, or try to. But while I'm doing that, did you know that marriage is just your spouse perpetually standing in front of the kitchen drawer or cabinet you need to open? <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Um, I was waiting at a small train station when a man put up a sign regarding my train. 30 minute delay. What happened, I asked, and he said, the train went. Okay, I don't get that one. Uh, oh, wait, it continues on. The train went off the rails. So, how long will it take to fix that? And he responded, quite a few hours. So, why put up the sign that would say it would take 30 minutes? Well, it's the only sign that we have. But um bum bum Thanks, Captain Asholio. And, at our weekly Bible study, the leader asked an elderly gentleman, Walt, to open the meeting with a prayer. So Walt did so in a soft voice, and another man, straining to hear, shouted, I can't hear you, to which Walt replied, I wasn't talking to you. Well, there you go. So, what's that? Um, oh, Q does have a November 13th prediction. I I'd, I'd looked at that earlier today and didn't see any updates on there. So, okay. You dippity do da dippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Um, did you know that my wife just said, I don't have a wife, but I'm just going to, I'm reading this. <clears throat> she just said that definitely your daughter after the three-year-old muttered incomprehensible gibberish, laughed out loud, and said very proudly, I made a funny joke. Hey, that would be my kid. <laughs> that would be me. Yes. Um, I am not away. I am no longer away. Apparently, if I don't say pump and spam, oh, there you go. Okay. Um, let's see. A woman finds herself constantly awakened at night by her boyfriend talking in his sleep. So since she's up, she decides to record what he's saying. And here's some of the midnight ramblings. Oh, this should be fun. No, octopus, you can't do that. Ah, uh, spaghetti is hair for meatballs. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Um, <clears throat> where are my pancakes, penguin? Holy shit, this is her boyfriend. He's a, he's freaking hilarious. Um, I won't. The toilet said no. Damn, really? Seriously? I would love to hear this. Um, how about this one? Butterfly, you, you made a mistake walking in front of me. Okay, now, I, I say stuff like that to spiders that build a nest and, or a, a web in front of me. Um, but I want to be Mary Poppins. Oh, holy crap. And do you know where the TV remote is? No, I'll just ask the duck. See, that would be something Vinny would do, and then Vinny would shoot the duck. Because Vinny just isn't nice. 
Okay, thanks Reader's Digest. I'm finding fun things in there. Seeing as how, yeah. Computer issues. Isn't it wild? I can still broadcast, but I can't do nothing else. Okay, except for read the chat. Okay, in the quotable quotes section, anything sweet, really sweet, that I have was nothing that I planned. Oh, that's from Sandra Bullock. Cool. How about this one? I tell every child I meet, you have greatness inside you, and your job is to figure out what that is, dig it out, and give it to the world. Oh, that's from Henry Winkler. Cool. I like that one. I have to remember that one. Beware of monotony. It's the mother of all the deadly sins. That's from Edith Wharton. How about this one? People are readily identified as being left-brained or right-brained, but I want to be identified as using my entire brain. Ah, that's from Mae Jemison, who's an astronaut, and I don't think we've ever been in space, but that's just my personal opinion. Look, Firefox opened, but it's not responding. Son of a bitch, what's going on? My poor computer. Okay. Um, an acquaintance is a person we know well, or we know well enough to borrow from, but not well enough to lend to. <laughs> No, I don't borrow from someone that I don't know very well because, yeah. And if I do borrow something, I return it in just as good a condition, if not better, than what it was when I borrowed it. I'm not one of those people that returns things broken and then go, well, it was that way when I got it. Because, yeah, I know people do that. Okay. Um... What are you guys talking about? Who's surfing skanky porn? I don't want to know about it. Don't, no, never mind. Never mind. I don't want to know. Okay. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within. Ah, I like that one. How about this one? At this stage in life, I sort of go, okay, I won't scream at you. I'll just talk to you loud. That's from Miranda Lambert. Okay, Miranda, thank you. Cue the skanky porn comment. Really? <laughs> Here's a point to ponder. Oh, from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, you can't decide what shape the earth is. So if you're a child, you're curious about your environment, period. You're, you're overturning rocks, you're plucking petals off flowers, and you're doing things that create disorder. Then what do adults do? They say, don't pluck the petals, don't play with the egg. Everything is a don't. We spend the first year teaching them to walk and talk and the rest of their lives telling them to shut up and sit down or get out of our way. Well, damn, Neil. I got to agree with you on that one. Not very many things I agree with you on, but I really do have to agree with you on that one. And I got to thank my grandchildren for that because holy smokes, you know, when you're a parent and you get to see... um. You get to see your the world through your children's eyes, and and it's kind of cool, but you also got the responsibility of being a parent, and so, you know, you really can't, or I really didn't, enjoy the childhood of my children so much because they were fun, we had a lot of good times, but I was busy being mom, and so I really didn't get to do a lot of that fun playing stuff but once I got grandkids ah that was awesome because I didn't have the responsibility of being a mom so I could just take my grandkids and we would go out and we would lay in the grass and we would look at bugs and and we would pluck blades of grass yes I know we were pulling grass but you know, or blowing the dandelion fluffs and all that other fun stuff, usually in my daughter's yard. And, you know, I could really enjoy 
seeing the world through their eyes. And then I see them go to school and I see a lot of that wonder and awe get taught out of them. And it saddens me. It really does. Man, the public school system <sighs> and the system over here, because where my grandkids went to over when they were over in the UK, it was wonderful. I mean, they got to go on little excursions. Um, they talked about fairies and little people, and I'm not talking fairies as in the LGBTQRWXYZ community or whatever the hell. I'm talking about, um, you know, the little people, you know, and, and they got to learn a lot of lore and all that other fun stuff. And you, they don't do that over here. And that's sad. It's really sad. They don't let the kids, you know, let their imagination go with them for a while. And that saddens me. You know, kids need to be need to have that wonder going on in their world. Okay. Sorry, we're having trouble. Yes, I know you are. Okay. Let's just I know my computer is having trouble, period. So, we'll just do this. Dun, dun, dun. We'll start a new session with Firefox, if it'll let me. Nope. Okay. It's still being a poo-poo head. I'm going to have to run some stuff when I get done tonight, because this is redunculous. <clears throat> In any case, here's another article that was in Reader's Digest. Keep Internet spies out of your home. Smart devices equipped with cameras and microphones can be easy targets for hackers. Not just hackers. The gooberman who wants to keep an eye on you, the eye in the sky. Maybe that's why things are wonky. Hmm, okay, i got to put my tinfoil hat on. So... For a nervous first-time mom, the new Wi-Fi connected baby monitor seemed like a godsend. Uh, Jamie Summit was thrilled that the system let her use her phone to watch her son Noah and even control the camera angle in case the baby moved. And her husband and sister-in-law could operate the monitor with their phones too. What none of them realized was that they were not the only ones who could watch. Ooh, that's scary. What is all of this, Grim? Um, oh, an effort to improve uptime and stability. How fun, Grimmy. Let's see. I don't have stability. <laughs> okay. Darn it, darn it. So, not going to be much of a podcast tonight, Grim. <laughs> okay, back to this article. So, one night, all three grown-ups were sitting together in the Summit's South Carolina home when Jamie noticed that her live video was panning around the baby's room. That's odd, she thought, since none of them were touching their phones at the moment. And then the camera stopped and refocused on the exact spot where she usually breastfed. Uh-oh. That's kind of creepy. Okay. Damn it, I'm not used to doing this shit, so it's like, wait a minute here. I lost my place. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, now Jamie was confused and wondering whether there was a bug in the monitor's software. Then she realized the uglier truth. Someone else was controlling the camera. She unplugged the baby monitor and called the police. It makes me kind of sick to think that kind of stuff or the kind of stuff the person may have seen 
and he still could be out there, Jamie told ABC News. And I'm supposed to protect my son, and I feel like I failed him. Well, yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> thanks, Grim. <laughs> Well, smart gadgets are all about convenience, allowing you to control household devices like thermostats and doorbells and refrigerators and coffee makers and slow cookers with your phone or your computer to turn on or turn off lights and music with your voice via your Amazon Echo or Google Home, which I will not have either one of those. And uh, But that convenience can make you easy prey for hackers. So whenever you connect to the internet, a door opens just a crack. Enough for hackers to get through, and smart devices don't always do a good job of keeping the interlopers out. One of the biggest issues is that these devices, or these device makers, are really thinking about security second, says Andrew Newman, who is the founder and CEO of Reason Software Company. Um, security breaches are rare, but tech experts fear that as these gizmos become more popular, they'll also become bigger targets. And the time to protect yourself is now. Now, isn't that freaking sad? Isn't that sad? Um, okay. So, what is this? I'm checking out here. Um, okay, reminder tonight. You may have connected direct to Vaughn Live TV to Real Liberty for the video and the direct stream, yada, yada, yada. Oh, okay. I'm just reading the chitty chat because I got a, I got the swirly from hell going on on my computer right now. Ooh, it actually let me click something on Firefox. Oh, is my Firefox is critically out of date. I'm not going to update you right now. Sorry. At least you came up. Nothing else is. So, my poor computer. In any case, back to this. So, your small electronics and routers. Yeah, well, most smart devices require passwords. But a weak one isn't hard to crack. Mine are really pretty, yeah. I have really weird passwords. Just saying. So, um, assuming you've set one in the first place, and there are a lot of people that don't really have tough passwords. Now, hackers can use Google-like search engines to find out which gadgets might not be password protected. And they can simply enter a specific type of device, like your security cameras, and the search engine will... I have to turn a page. I have to turn a page. Can you imagine that? Um, it will pull up a list of those that are potentially unprotected. Ooh, that sucks. But when it comes to breaking into your devices, the real firewall and potential weak link is your router. Because it's connected to every online router or every online device in your home. So hacking your router is like picking the lock to your front door. Once inside, thieves can control any connected smart gadgets, including its cameras and microphones. Yikes. So, your router can be easy to crack if you don't change the default password. And some tech support websites list common preset passwords for most router brands and models. My router... <coughs> Good luck with that. I mean, they, someone might get it figured out, but yeah. Certain people that have I have allowed to have access, they're like, where the hell did you come up with that? Well, I ain't telling. I ain't telling. Okay. I had to just close Firefox. It's freaking pissing me off. So... Changing your default settings on your devices and your router to include strong, unique passwords is essential. And uh, try taking a phrase that you'll remember, <clears throat> excuse me, like four score and seven years ago, and using its initials, 
as a start and then mix in capital letters, numbers, and symbols. Another safeguard, an attacker who gets um, to your router won't be able to access the devices if they're turned off. So plug them into the surge protector strip and shut off the power strip when you aren't using them. It also doesn't hurt the physic uh, to physically block any prying eyes in case they do manage to get through your security. So a piece of tape or sticky note over a camera you won't be using will do the trick. And I, yeah, my camera is shut and yeah, blocked. So yeah, on my computer because I just don't use don't use it anymore. Um, let's see, where was I at? There I was. Now, of course, the one surefire way to protect yourself is to avoid these gadgets altogether. And if you don't really need to have a smart device at this point, then don't buy one. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Ooh, hi, Vinny. Are you 420? And yeah, it is 420 somewhere. So, let me try. I'm going to try Vivaldi again, just because. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Danielle, who is a resident of Portland, Oregon, was surprised to get a call from one of her husband's employees in Seattle who said that he'd been receiving a recording on his phone of the couple chatting in their home. They thought the Amazon Echo which is a voice controlled gizmo that can be programmed to adjust their thermostat lights and more had been hacked but Amazon investigated and discovered that the incident had come about by accident the device doesn't take commands until it hears its name like Alexa somehow this Alexa thought it had heard its name and then further misinterpreted the conversation as instructions to record and send audio files to a contact in Danielle's husband's phone. Oh yeah, accidentally on purpose. Yeah, right. I don't think so. That's why I won't. And my kids have Alexa and I just, I won't. I just won't. I have an Amazon Fire that has Alexa and I haven't activated it. I just won't. Sorry. Now, um, dun dun dun. Okay, now the employee who received these recordings, um, was not really pleased with this. But with smart devices, we tend to forget that they're there. But they, uh, they're there to record us and collect data. And that's part of the business model. Isn't that just great? So, the odds of home assistance accidentally recording conversations are low, experts say. And the devices should ask for confirmation before sending information to a third party. But if its volume is low or you can't see the lights on, on the device that alerts you that it has been activated, excuse me, you might not realize it is engaged and potentially misunderstanding what it's hearing. So keep the volume up and the speakers visible to minimize any potential issues. Uh, no, I would turn the damn thing down. Now, um, sometimes breaches in privacy are personal. Jesus Ekerzata Zarata has a smart doorbell that sends live video of his front door in Miami to his phone when it senses motion or someone rings the bell. Now you need a password to connect the doorbell to your phone and he had shared his with uh, his boyfriend. Oops. Well, then he changed the password twice after they broke up, so he was shocked when he got emails from the ex criticizing his comings and goings from his own house. It turns out that the ex was watching him through the device, and the security settings 
which have since been updated, didn't disconnect users after the password change. The ex-boyfriend had never logged out of the doorbell's app, so he never lost his connection to it. Uh-oh, that is not cool. Yeah. And yeah, that does sound like something that the, what is that? If gun owners defy assault weapons ban, the government has nukes. Oh, I remember seeing something. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. And I thought, what the hell is your guys' malfunction? Okay. Yeah, not cool. Okay. That does sound like something. Oh, shit. I picked up my magazine and it was upside down. You can just call me George W. <laughs> okay, so in conclusion with this story, when shopping for smart devices... Look for models that allow multiple users. All users will have their own logins, and you can delete individual accounts if you ever need to. As an extra precaution, you can also put the device through a factory reset to delete all the data, including passwords. No matter what, check in periodically to see whether there's software update for the device if a vulnerability gets patched You'll stay one step ahead of the hackers. Well, sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, cripes. <laughs> Here's a quote. Watching a teenager, teenager on his smartphone, I realized that the idiom, all thumbs, might be doomed. Oh, Lord, you are right. It might be. So, let's see. News from the world of medicine. Are we having fun with Reader's Digest, seeing as how my s poor, dear, sweet computer is... Ah, it is trying to do something. Oh, well, Waterfox is trying to respond. It's trying really, really hard. So, I'll just let it continue trying once it gets itself figured out. Um, so, here is why vegetarians should add B12. In a National Institute of Health study, vegan and vegetarian participants tended to score higher than meat eaters on the depression measuring scale. Now, while the results don't prove causality, it wouldn't be surprising if nutritional or nutritional shortfalls were to blame, according to researchers. In particular, vegetarians and vegans are often low on vitamin B12, and animal products are the only natural source of this nutrient. However, it's possible to reach the recommended levels by taking supplements or by eating fortified foods such as soy milk and breakfast cereal. Don't drink soy milk because soy is GMO. Yes... Okay, it's trying to do something. Okay. Um, as far as air pollution, it can harm your kidneys. Did you know that? Polluted air has long been linked to major health conditions such as heart disease, stroke, cancer, asthma, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. A new study based on data from nearly 2.5 million people now adds kidney disease to that list. And according to researchers, the adverse effects increase as pollution levels increase. You know, I was watching something uh, on Netflix the other day, Ask a Doctor, and they were talking about thunderstorm asthma down in Australia, and they actually had nine people die in one thunderstorm because of thunderstorm asthma basically what had happened was they'd had so much um moisture like in september 
that all of the plants, you know, were growing quite well. And then in November, they, um, as things were drying out and, and getting ready to, I don't, I don't know, like that must be their summertime, I'm thinking. But they had winds kick up with this thunderstorm and all of this pollen from these plants come blowing into town and, and lots of people had respiratory issues. I think they said 3,000 people were hospitalized and nine died. To me, that says that there is something really, really screwed up with this uh, enclosed system that we live in because people should not be that susceptible to pollen. They shouldn't be. And so I'm thinking all that chemtrailing is working really well. Of course, California is case in point as well on all that chemtrailing shit. So... Hmm. Okay. So, did you know that the new smart hearing aids are in the works? A hearing aid smarter than me. I don't know that I want that. Researchers in New York's Columbia University Foo Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science are developing a high-tech hearing aid that can help people focus on a single voice in a noisy restaurant or any other setting that's packed with competing and overlapping sounds that would be cool until it's not now the hearing aid works by monitoring the brain activity of the user to determine whether or not he or she is conversing with a specific speaker i'm not liking this already i'm not liking this mm, no i don't want a hearing aid monitoring my brain activity that's no that's not right if it can monitor, it can fuck with. <clears throat> Apparently, it can then automatically pick that person's voice out of the mixed audio feed and amplify it. In a recent trial, almost all of the subjects found the device helpful and wanted to continue using it beyond the test. Because it made life so simple until it doesn't. Until it doesn't. Um... Okay. I will just do that. Oh. Come on. I know. Hey, my water fox is trying to do something. <laughs> Don't you just love this? I know I do. I'm just having a blast, let me tell you. Did you know that diabetes meds can combat osteoporosis? Yeah, prove it. Because type 2 diabetes affects uh, bone metabolism, it's not uncommon for people with the illness to develop osteoporosis. In fact, many medicines treat both diseases. So, researchers in the United Kingdom and Greece found that met metformin, so whatever, okay. It's big long ass word. Gluco or yeah, glucotrol. There you go. And DPP4 inhibitors. Ha. Huh. Oh well. In any case, these things work best to help strengthen bones and control diabetes. So if you suffer from both conditions, ask your doctor whether these drugs will be best for you. So it's uh glucotrol um Genuvia. You know, if they're that freaking hard for me to pronounce, I sure as hell don't want to be taking them. So there, moving along. Did you know that a dim light can make you dim? I didn't know that. Apparently it can. Working in poorly lit offices can just isn't just depressing. It may actually make you dumber. Hmm. That's their story and they're sticking to it. Has nothing to do with that smartphone. Hmm. So, in a study from Michigan State University, Nile grass, uh, Nile grass rats who spent their days in dim light did not do well on spatial learning tasks 
and showed a 30% decrease in the number of uh, dendritic spines. Okay, those are the connections that allow neurons to communicate. And rats who were exposed to bright light, the, um, the, or the rats who were exposed to bright light, improved their performance. Now, the study's co-author noted that this is similar to when people can't find their way back to their cars after a few hours in a movie theater, which is suggesting that light levels might have the same effect on us. Luckily, when the dim rats were exposed to bright light again, their brain or their brain capacity fully recovered. Although I don't know that a super ager gene, what? Oh, Viagra can reduce colon cancer risk. Really? Well, hmm. Yeah, it's going to be one of those, going to be one of those. Things keep trying to, and then they go to shit. Okay, so how about this, the donkey hug? In 2009, I rescued a skittish donkey. Bo came, or yeah, Bo came from a nearby cattle ranch and now lives peacefully on my ranch in the Bitterroot Valley of Montana, along with another donkey, three horses, and two dogs. That's a bigger zoo than mine. But the key to Bo's successful rehab, from nervous rescue to happy and happy ranch animal, wasn't anything that I did. It was my grandson Dylan. See, grandbabies are awesome. When he was just shy of four years old, Dylan came with his parents to spend the 4th of July with me on their way to Canada for a vacation. Now, Bo kept his distance from the grown-ups, but he displayed an unusual fascination with Dylan, so we decided to introduce them. Move slowly, keep your arms down, and be quiet and stoop down sometimes. This is what I told my grandson. So Dylan cautiously approached Bo, step by step, holding a soft rubber curry comb, and Bo held his ground, but he seemed intrigued by this little visitor. Dylan rubbed Bo's shoulder and neck softly with the comb, removing any remnants of his thick winter coat, and it's hard for an almost four-year-old to stay still for long. An impulse overcame restraint. Dylan made one quick move, and Bo scampered off. But Bo and Dylan were not ready to give up. Dylan approached again to witness a preschooler learn to control himself in such a short time was amazing. Now, as we watched, true love developed between this once distrustful donkey and the gentle little boy. Over the next few days, Bo let Dylan throw his arms around his neck, pet his legs, hold his head in his hands, and pat his cheeks and Dylan felt free to sit at Bo's feet while Bo carefully nibbled his shirt collar and hair and rubbed Dylan's back with his bristly chin. Just as Dylan was earning Bo's trust, Bo showed restraint with Dylan. He hugged, or, yeah, he hugged Dylan, yes, a donkey can hug, without knocking him off balance. They met again one week later as the family passed through on their return trip, and it was almost dark, but Dylan and his dad trekked out to the far reaches of the pasture. Bo came to meet them enthusiastically, and he is now changed and trusting donkey, and Dylan is a miracle worker. How cool. See, four-year-olds can be pretty freaking awesome. Okay, and a mental exercise. I'm still trying to figure out if I got a browser that'll open. Apparently not. Not fun. Damn it. Okay, so, as a mental exercise, having recently joined a large fitness center in the area and being 76 years old, okay, I'm not 76, not yet. 
That's quite a few years down the road yet. I was concerned that after my workout, I would forget which was my locker. Well, on my first day, as I placed my things in the locker, several women were engaged in casual conversation around me. Afraid I'd be distracted and not remember my spot, I said my number, I'm 86, in what I thought was a whisper. Apparently, it was louder than I realized. So as conversation stopped and several voices called out, you certainly look good for your age. Well, hey, there you go. That's a way to get yourself a compliment. So, these are true stories in Reader's Digest, apparently. How about laughter is the best medicine? A linguistics professor is lecturing his class. In English, he says, a double negative forms a positive. However, in Russian, a double negative remains a negative. But there isn't a single ang language, not one, in which a double positive can express a negative. And to which a voice from the back yelled out, yeah, right. <laughs> that would have been someone in my high school class. Ah, da 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 da. How about this? A man's bragging about his promotion to a vice president and he got so out of hand that his wife was annoyed. Look, being vice president isn't that special, she said. Even they have um, a vice president of peas in the supermarket. Not believing her for one second, the man called the supermarket and demanded, Get me the vice president of peas. And the clerk replied, Fresh, canned, or frozen. Oh, how funny. How funny. Let's see. I'm still waiting on things on my computer to do their thing so that I can do my thing. So, yeah, I'm still doing my thing, but it's just it's a weird doing my thing. Oh, hey, here we go. In Reader's Digest, we found a fix. Nine tricks to improve your life. Number one, to charge your phone faster. To boost your battery more quickly, turn on airplane mode. That pauses your phone's background noise, such as random notifications and GPS roaming, which tends to drain the battery. And the extra juice won't be much, but when you're in a hurry, every little bit helps. Ah, and I, I listened to a video the other day, and the gal said if you're not using your phone, put it in elf, uh, airplane mode, especially if you're going to be wearing it on your person. Because if you're wearing it on your person and if you're driving, it is constantly seeking out another, you know, the closest antenna. And so it's constantly sending out those frequencies and those frequencies are not healthy for you. So if you're driving, put it on airplane mode. Number two, to save a tooth that's been knocked out. Let's see if this is one that I already know. If a permanent tooth is accidentally knocked out of your mouth, don't panic. Pick up the tooth by the crown or the chewing surface, gently rinse off any debris, and stick it back in your mouth if you can. If not, put it in a cup of milk and get to the dentist as soon as possible so it can be re-implanted. And yes, that also works if you break a tooth. Um, when I worked at the dentist, that was something... Uh, a kid had gotten, I think they were playing basketball, and she'd got elbowed in the mouth, and it broke a tooth. And they found the tooth. They put it in a milk carton, hauled ass to the dentist. And she, the dentist that I worked for was actually able to repair the tooth. Um, she, she had to be very, she had a temporary crown over it for a while there. But, yeah, the, the tooth actually grew back together again. Number three. To stop Fido's chewing. Ooh, I maybe need to know these. Um, if you've got a dog that won't stop chewing on its tail or paw or fur, paint the spot with myrrh oil. Oh. Huh. I have myrrh oil. Yes, I do. Number four. A makeshift humidifier for your hotel room. 
The air in hotel rooms can be very dry, and if your room has a kitchen area, fill a tea kettle with water and heat um, heat it on the stove. Then let the steam escape into the room um, until most of the water has been evaporated. This can help relieve cough, stuffy nose, and other symptoms of colds and allergies. And if you do not have a humidifier in your home, Get yourself some of those uh, drying racks or the, you can get them on Amazon. I got a couple of them for like $8 um, that'll elevate above your uh, furnace grates about three, four inches and then get you a tea towel and get the tea towel wet and drape it over that. And then every time your furnace kicks on, it blows through that, that moist tea towel. That's what I do because I don't have a whole house humidifier redneck in it here because well you know it's an old house so what the hell number five to cut down on added sugar I'm getting close to the end you guys your torture is almost over and my torture is almost over and watch Vivaldi will actually start work oh shit yeah here we go if it starts Vivaldi's working <laughs> Doesn't it figure? I got 15 minutes left. And here we go. It starts working. And now it says it's not responding. God dang it. Okay. Be that way. So, to cut down on added sugar. The average adult in the United States consumes almost three times more added sugar than is recommended. That does not surprise me. Read your labels, people. There is sugar in everything. So, um, when preparing a baked goods recipe, swap out sugar for uh, pureed prunes. Oh, I don't know about that. Apparently, that cuts out the added sugar while increasing both the fiber and nutrient content of the recipes. I don't know that I necessarily want to add prunes to everything that I bake. I think I will just kind of bypass that little tip right there. How about this one? Save on Sam's Club membership. I saved on my Sam's Club membership. I didn't renew it. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you have a friend with a Sam's Club membership, ask whether you can become an add-on card holder to his or her account. That way, you get all of the perks at the discount price of $40 a year, down from $100. Yeah, well, yeah. No, I don't go to Sam's. Um, how to stay awake after that big Thanksgiving dinner? Don't overstuff yourself. That's what you do. Um, you can forget what you've heard about what the tryptophan in turkey makes you sleepy on Thanksgiving. In fact, the protein in turkey, as well as in chicken and steak, signals the brain to produce dopamine, which is the motivation molecule that gives you energy. So what really makes you sluggish after a big meal is the massive portions you just gobbled down. In other words, pace yourself, Junior. Don't be scarfing it all down. Ding dong. Okay, number eight, detox your dryer sheet. Ah, Manufacturers of dryer, fabric softener dryer sheets aren't required to identify their fragrance ingredients as of yet, and there are at least 3,000 that they could use, some of which are safe and some of which are not. Even unscented sheets might contain toxic chemicals, but a fragrance-free version can reduce your chance of exposure. So, if you really want to add a scent to those clothes, put a few drops of your favorite essential oil on a tennis ball and throw that into the dryer. Or... What I have is I have, um, well, doTERRA sells them. They're, they're um, wool balls, and you just do a couple of drops of that because apparently the um, lanolin has um, kind of anti-static properties to it. Um, and finally, number nine, to defrost your windshield fast. Now, because rubbing alcohol doesn't freeze until it reaches 127 or negative 127 degrees Fahrenheit, <clears throat> excuse me, it makes a great defrosting solution. 
So make a mixture that's one-third water and two-thirds rubbing alcohol and put it in a spray bottle. A few spritzes on an icy windshield will help you see clearly in no time. And you can also use it on your doors, your car door handle if they are frozen shut. That's kind of cool. I'll have to remember that defrost the windshield thing. That is cool. Okay, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on a freaking Freaker Friday where if it hasn't been freaking freaky, I don't know what the hell it has been. It's like, golly, this has been a day. It's been a day. And, uh, okay, my, my Vivaldi is up, but it's not letting me do anything. But I can see on Twitter that Truth or UFO just posted, those who have the courage to question the indoctrination and lies of society are the only ones who will find the truth. I got to agree with that one, Truth or UFO. Thank you ever so much. And thank you guys for putting up with my haphazard, goofy ass, what the hell, screwed up, freaking computer having a shit fit radio show. <laughs> It's like, holy mackinoli. This has been a Freaker Friday. In any case, be sure to stick around because Grimner and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball. And a good time will be had by all with that one, except for I'm going to be going to bed early because i got to get up early, go to work. Um, but I'll listen to the podcast later, probably after I get this computer worked on. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll do it on the other computer. I don't know. In any case, um, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time will be Flash a Rooney Dork with the Dork Table here on RLM. Also, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's going to be kicking off the blues here on the RLM. And I'm sure there will be a rousing game of trivia going on in the Chitty Chat Room. That seems to be the only place I can converse and all that other fun stuff this evening. Um, and then directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. I will be back Wednesday, hopefully, unless this computer just completely, completely douches. And if it does, then I'll get a hold of Grim and I'll make him help me get stuff loaded on the other computer and I'll have to be retrained. Because this is not gray hair, it's mature blonde. So I will have to be retrained. <laughs> I may need to just go ahead and do that anyway. Grim, I may have to, yeah, Wednesday. We need to have a date so you can get me hooked up on the other computer. So I don't, maybe I won't have these issues anymore. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. So... And yes, next week, Wednesday, I will be on for the rocket chair, but there will be no rocket chair next week, Friday, which is the Friday after Thanksgiving. So I'm going to get the hell out of here because this, this has been like pulling teeth without the pain. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't totally been painless, but it's, well, it's going to be painful to... No, I'm not going to listen to this podcast. I'm just not. And and I will do on my other computer. <laughs> I will do some kind of bloggy something or other something or other on here. Huh. But yeah, I'm out of here early because uh, I'm frustrated. I'm very frustrated with this poor computer. So y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend. We're supposed to have snow out here tomorrow. That's going to be just way too much fun. And uh, in the interim, and hey, Grim, I actually may try and hook up with you Sunday if Sunday's not too crazy. And then that way, you know, after Hal, maybe we can have a practice run. <laughs> if you're not too busy and after Hal. But uh, until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening and a wonderful weekend. And I will catch up with you sometime in the funny papers. Hopefully, I will still have a few hairs on my head. I haven't pulled them out. Hopefully. <laughs> but until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>